Andrew White.
name is Cedric Davis. I am an educator. So teachers, I do know how to fight for you. The $5,000 is great, but what about those retired teachers that have a problem with their uh, TRS and their ERS? Because now that their insurance is going up, how do they afford to live? I know how to fix that. You fix it by making sure that corporate America pays its fair share of the tax on education. We can even add a 3% to the 27% of the lottery that we get combined, that's an extra billion dollars. We can do a lot with that billion dollars, teacher. Now we'll run down my resume because it is lending. Okay, I've been a mayor, I've been a police chief, I've been a school board trustee, I am an educator, I sat on the North Texas Super Bowl Committee, many, many crime commissions and things like that in Dallas. Most of all that I'm so excited about, I've been a community activist. I get out on the picket line with the teachers, the firefighters, the the uh, flight attendants, these are the things that builds community. I know how to put the streets, uh, plumbing in the streets, uh, lower the taxes. We rebuilt roads and we rebuilt highways in the area in which I was in there. We made economic development better for the people in the areas that I live, that I lived in and that I was the mayor of. Because the simple fact is, we needed jobs. So we invited corporations to come in, but we made sure that they had to hire and move to that area where we live, work, and play. So I know how to get it done. The experience counts. Because when you go get Greg Adams, he's bringing a $41, $43 million workshop. This year, money is not about everything. It's some of it. But it's about the people because it is a movement that is going on in America. And the people are tired of government not being responsible. And they are standing up saying that we will not take it anymore. And guess what? I'm that soldier on the ground. It reminds me when I was a Desert Star veteran. I learned that we leave no one behind. Because people in America is not looking for a handout, they're looking for a hand up. And we as a people got to stand together and said, no more. We can take this from our government because we empowered you in the first place. So with that said, I'm going to take my seat. Hopefully I'll follow my campaign. Yes, I'm very energetic, but I'm serious about this business of taking care of Texas. Texas has suffered at, at the hands of Greg Adams for long enough. And when Andrew said that he's like Trump, no, he's more extreme than Trump. That's right, that's right. He's yeah. worse. So first of all, if I'm your governor, instead of him you know, allowing Trump to bring a wall on our borders, no, since Greg has like to sue people, guess what? Let's sue Trump and keep that wall off our borders. Let's support Donald Trump. Woo! Good evening, everyone. I'm Jeffrey Payne, and I am running to be your next governor. I started this journey, actually I'm going to step down so I can actually see bright lights. I started this journey last July, and we have now just crossed 25,000 miles on our car. In every corner of Texas, 63 counties as of today. Because we actually have a strategy called the 254 strategy within our campaign, because it's going to take all 254 counties. We must listen to every Texan, not just the big cities, not just the Rio Grande Valley, every Texan. Some say, well, don't go to the red counties. You're not going to get anything. Well, let me tell you something. We are going to get something. Because as I have been traveling, let me tell you what I have found. We do not have a blue wave about to hit Texas. We don't. We have a blue tsunami about to hit Texas. <laughs> of Democrats than in 2018. I think a lot of us woke up on November 7th of 2016, and it wasn't a dream. I keep thinking it was, but it's not. Then we had a special session where we talked about toilets and which trees to cut down. Our education, our health care, the gerrymandering, campaign finance reform, immigration, you name it. It's all in the toilet, and the only thing our governor cares about is who's sitting on one. That is not how we run government. We don't make lists of enemies. You need a leader. I own five businesses in Dallas, three nonprofits. Before I moved to Dallas, Hurricane Katrina was what brought me to Dallas in 2005. Before then, I was a mediator with the Department of Labor. As a mediator, you know you have to bring people in who don't like each other. And usually during the mediation process, they don't even like you. I'm used to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good, bring everyone to the table. Everyone has a right 
and a place at the table. Let's find our common ground and build from there. But there are certain things I will not budge on. The main one being women's rights. We need to refund Planned Parenthood. We can't do that anymore. That's why I will not only advocate to make sure that we don't limit women's access, but that we actually go back and undo what's been done. And that's what you need in order. And JeffreyForTexas.com. My name is Joe Lombok. Uh, never run for a political office before. Being governor of Texas was never on my bucket list. Uh, my credentials for this, or my qualifications, I guess, are the 10 years that I was a uh, precinct chair, like many of you people here, down in southwest Houston. Uh, it's a good life. We, you know, we do all the grunt work, knocking on doors, getting out in the bad weather. And uh, you know, we get lots of thoughts, or lots of thanks, rather, on election day. But it's a long year between election day. But I'll tell you, as a precinct chair, I have met many uh, elected officials and many candidates. Some of them are pretty sharp, some of them not so much. We've all met those kind of before. But to me, the real wisdom comes from the grassroots Democrats. People like you guys out here who uh, get the voters out to the polls, you do the, the grunt work, you do the hard work, and we need to thank all of you guys for everything that you do. I've never planned to be governor, uh, but the last couple of years I saw the same kind of thing that all of you did. With both national parties hollering at one another, well, your candidate is worse than our candidate. And then this past year in the state legislature, well, that's, we are an embarrassment to the other 49 states. That's why I got into it. Um, Qualifications. Uh, I'm self-employed. I've always done uh, consumer electronics stuff, also because there's always a new, a new toy out there, a new piece to put in the puzzle, a new, uh, a new way to uh, get things done. And that's what I hope to bring to the governor's office as well. When you do the same thing over and over again, you get the same result. And, and hopefully, we've learned that lesson by now. It's been 24 years since we've elected a Democrat to any state office, and we got to start doing things differently. we got to start speaking a common language with Republicans out there, because we're going to need Republican voters to over to uh, kick Greg right right Abbott out of office. Yeah. Yeah. And what I recommend, but we've got to talk about this. I'm suggesting and recommending to the state party national party, what I call the, the new pro-life. The Republicans have been telling us that they're pro-life for years and years, but they're not. They're pro-birth, after that you're on your own. A real pro-life, I hope a Democratic pro-life, will be supportive of people not only through the birthing process, but afterwards. I've got, I've got more ways to get to them.
no more migrant workers because they took them away from the higher education. Back then, there were no exceptions for coming in as migrant workers in October or November or December. If you didn't come in at the beginning, you couldn't come in. So my mom said, no more. This child is going, the last two children got to go to school. And one of the neat things that happened on that is I learned very much about wanting to be in school and the changes it made. I'm a strong believer in universal truth. Start out right and, and have it go up all the way. If you start out in a good way, you're going to want to continue. And after that, I went to college. Again, no funds, no way to get through college. And I only heard about grants and, and loans the last year of my school. So it took me six years to go through a four-year school because I worked my way through. Sometimes two or three jobs at a time. You know, a few hours here, a few hours there. And I worked several jobs. And then I went into the military. I spent a little time in the military, and, uh, and then I, I, I was with the reserves in the National Guard, with a total of about 13 years. After that, I was blessed to go uh, and be a federal agent. And being a federal agent, I was also sent overseas to open up uh, an embassy for my department and to do a couple of other things. I also went to other countries to do intel for the United States. Then after that, I stepped down from my um, role. Shepherd's work is already out. Let me hurry real quick. For the last 13 years, I've been the proud Shepherd's of Dallas County, seventh largest department in the United States, over 2,800 employees, and 153 million in budget. Don't tell me no Latina can handle working with people and having big budgets. We can do this.
And what will you do about it? Well, let's go. Like I said, you always have an educator, and I am an educator now. So he failed by not closing the corporate tax loophole. If they took in 49.8 billion, billion last year, and it is one percent. Talking about next year, 498 million to the school. If you go to look at the lottery, like I was saying earlier about the three, talking about the other. Of the shortfall that we have in the education fund. It should be an education fund, but a lot of people don't know. The Red Hand has what we call the Governor Science Research Fund. They're spending over 11 billion in 106 spending in 11 billion a year. He has so many different programs that are titled under the Governor that the public doesn't know about. So we need to put those funds back into the education of our children. We need to stop putting 20 million into the balance program, 20 million into the private school. Because my understanding of the Texas Constitution is that, that we should not expend taxpayers' money on private education. So we need to come back to public education without putting the money into public education. That's what we're doing. And we have been able to take this kind of money. It's pretty clear we won't have that to public education, even though our Constitution says that the state will provide it. So that is the extremism that we have. And as governor, believe me, I put those funds of government, and I have always been a proven person for the people. I think I only get two minutes, right? Yes. It's going to take more than two minutes to tell you how to have screwed it up. So I'm going to talk about the solutions. One. The voucher system will never pass my notes without a pizza. <laughs> As Andrew mentioned, and we've been saying since July, we need to close the loophole on large corporations. That's five to six billion dollars a year that we're missing out on. Put that in education. We need to look at our current lottery system. Remember when we all voted on the lottery and it was supposed to all go towards education? As in like something extra, maniac, as we say in Louisiana? Yeah, it wasn't. They put it in on top and then they take it out at the bottom. Lottery money, you put it in, it stays in. We also need to look at the legalization of medical and recreational cannabis. All taxes are We also need to look at the casinos. We are losing way too much money to New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. And all that money goes towards education, and you don't put it in, you put it in. We also need to start treating our teachers as the professionals they are. We need to look at star tests. The star test is used as a form of punishment towards the student, the teacher, the school, and the district. We need to change that and test our children at the beginning of the school year. So we have time to make up any deficiency they may have in their educational journey. Testing them when there's only two to three weeks in school, what are you going to do? You look at them. Well, you didn't have to. That's not how we need to treat our children. We need to use to any testing because we have to test because there's no child left behind. <coughs> it's a federal law. But how we test and how we use the test is determined by Texas. is a huge issue with education. We're all going to tell you that. Uh, and I'm not going to dwell on it too much except to say that uh, Houston, I'm from Houston, the Houston Independent School District is talking about having to make up for a shortfall in their budget next year of several million dollars because they can't get funding. So here we got a major uh, school district where 80% of the students are under the poverty line. We had to write a check to somebody else's school district this past year. And now we're going to end up maybe.
elephant that's been sitting in the middle of the room forever now. We've got to talk about that. Uh, secondly, uh, two years tuition free in our community colleges, every high school graduate who wants it.
is job creation also, isn't it? It's also job creation. So here's what our governor said. Here's his leadership. He signed a budget that had a requirement in the budget that property taxes increase 14% over the next two years. So that that budget can pass. And now he came out with a solution that says he's going to cap those property taxes at only 2.5%. Now, I, 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 you know, common sense, you know, those numbers don't quite add up, right? Paul says you can't have both. It doesn't work. Our state's gone out of the education business. Ten years ago, roughly ten years ago, the state paid for half of our students' education. Today, they pay for 38%. And they've just been throwing the rest of it on the property tax issues. So if you fix education in Texas, you've got to fix it by, by spending money wisely. We spent $800 million on border security. I believe the worst here is sure. But that's a federal issue. It's not a state issue. That money should go to education. I mean, close to what I talked about earlier. We need to expand the gaming. I mean, the money's there. We don't need to raise taxes. We just need to spend the money wisely. So if you fix education, if you fix health care, I'm predicting there'll be a health care question coming up here pretty soon. But if you predict health care, if you fix health care, then you fix property taxes. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Number two, Jeffrey, you go first, and it is on health care. <laughs> <laughs> health care, we know, the major concerns of all Texans. Where do you stand on the Affordable Care Act? To answer the direct, uh, question directly, the Affordable Care Act, ACA, needed to be fixed, it needed to be repaired, but what they're trying to do is destroy it. Just like Social Security when it was created, Medicare when it was created, it looks nothing like it. it what it looks like today is not, looks nothing like what it was invented when it first came out. We tweak it, we make it better. You come out with a program like the ACA, of course it's going to have to be tweaked. We knew that going in, it wasn't going to be perfect. But instead, the Republicans just want to scrap it and put more people on the uninsured list. I am a proponent for either Medicare for all or a single payer system and I'm more than a proponent. At time, I no more trust the federal government to get their you know what straight and figure it out themselves, so we're going to figure it out for them in Texas. And the second phone call I make will be to the federal government to ask for our Medicaid expansion money. 1.8 million people without access to health care when we denied that. And the only reason we denied it is because Obama came up with it in the Democrats. But mainly because it was Obama's name on it. They stood on the necks of people in order to prove this glorious point. And just so you know, the first phone call I have to make is to my aunt. She lives in Maine from the governor's office. That's why it's a second phone call. Let's start the line first. So, thank you. I believe that the current medical system is beyond repair. Collusion between the insurance industry, the medical industry, pharmaceutical, I think it's there's no hope for it anymore. So I think what we need to do is to join the rest of the civilized world. We are the only country in the civilized world that does not offer universal health care to a citizen. Yes. Yeah. Medical care is not a, uh, it's a right. It's a human right. And we've got to start treating our people as if they're human beings. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, uh, the main reason that they uh, messed up uh, Obamacare is because Obama's name was on it. And that's the bottom line. And they're scoring points with their Tea Party people. And uh, we've got to turn that around. we got to keep in mind that uh, Texas, I don't think Texas can do that alone. We've got to get the other states to put, the, put with us. Uh, I love Bernie Sanders. He's from Vermont. They don't have Medicare for all up there. So we've got to work together with the other states. Um, we're right, the, the federal government, they can't even keep the light up. So we got to we got to be the leaders and, uh, and get that right ourselves. Imagine one of the 11th survey of the happiest countries in the world. And the first five 
I'm sure you know that since Planned Parenthood uh, clinics were closed, over 100 pregnant women have died. We have medical deserts in some areas of Texas. There is no place where they can go for 100 miles to get care. They have a task force going on trying to figure out why over 100 pregnant women have died. I can very easily tell you why they died without having a task force. There's no medical care nearby. That's why they died, because they didn't have a place to go to where they could get some help. So my time is up, but I do believe in, oh, I have 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So uh, I do believe in universal health care, and again, Medicaid, my goodness, I'm over 65. So of course I want to be taken care of in my 90s and 100, not yet. <laughs> I still have a long ways to go. I said, of course I want to be taken care of. So you do need to pay attention to Medicaid extension. What is that? A couple billion, not million, billion dollars back into Texas. That was the money that we gave the government, the federal government. So why don't we take our money back? And we all agree on that. It, it only happened because of ego. You're doing it, I'm not taking it. Nobody should put evil above the health of, their, of the people in Texas. Thank you. I've been traveling around the state like Jeffrey. I've already put 25,000 miles on my car. <coughs> one of the places I've been stopping at all across the state of Texas is in Washington. Why? Because that's where working people go, Washingtonians. And when I talk to them, besides the income inequality, they talk about health care. And I can't tell you how many people, including my daughter, that had signed up for Obamacare and dropped it. Why? It's a question of access. I have access to buy a jet airplane, but I can't afford a jet airplane. The problem is the deductibles. When Kelly, my daughter, dropped out of Obamacare, she had a $12,000 deductible, $9,000 in copay for her and her family. My grandson has asthma. She's spending $600 a month on premiums, but she can't. But she still has to pay $300 a month for the asthma because she'll never need those copays and deductibles. So she just dropped out of Obamacare altogether. So it doesn't matter if we expand it. People will have it, but they can't meet the what use is it? I think what we need to do is that we expand it. We as a state need to help people make it. Damn allergies. All community loses the hospital. You can't just come back in and turn the lights back on. Those jobs are gone, the community suffers. That money is having a ramification that goes beyond just the health care needs. Going into the communities itself. Right? And, 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 and let's talk about this universal health care. We have universal health care. It's called the ER. Right? It's called the ER. There's no more expensive way to get health care than in the ER. We have the best ER system in the world, but that's not the right way to get health care. I heard a story of a man who was having mental health problems. He did the exact right thing. He went to the ER. He didn't have any other choice. You couldn't afford the medicine that you needed. And so the ER couldn't give them the $900 bill. They aren't allowed to give $900 bills out in the ER. They just sort of take you in and make sure you're not bleeding and put you back out. And they put it back out on the street. And he still was having a mental problem. So he went back the next day. They did the exact same thing. And you know what? He got kicked out again. And he went back. And this went on for weeks. And he was doing the right thing. Because he was dangerous to himself and to others. He spent $90,000 taking care of this man for a $900 bill. That doesn't make common sense. And that's where we have to fix this problem. And that's what we started. Thank you. First of all, I do believe in universal health care and your next governor. Get universal health care. The first 
thing I would do is run all the lawsuits that we have been pending around the CA. Second of all, I will go and accept Medicaid expansion. So we can get those hundreds of billions of dollars to make sure that people like the kids on the chips, over hundred thousand like kids get kicked off the chip. Over seven hundred uh, thousand Texans go without insurance. Mammograms go from one hundred dollars to over three hundred dollars a week. Rural areas cannot get medical care because we had Planned Parenthood in a lot of those rural areas. That was the only Medicare that they had. Medicare to get the help that they needed. Those clothes, now we've got women being ready to be put in jail if they do such things, such facilities like that. You cannot have an extreme government like that if he really cares about people. Second of all, I think uh, what they call Obamacare originally was Romney Care. Obama just took Romney Care and tweaked it and made it work better. I believe the Republicans got upset because he took Romney Care and made it better. <laughs> That's what they're upset about. So Greg Abbott didn't want to take it because somebody made it better than he. So when we say, when the Republican says that all the uh, Obamacare ain't this good, it ain't that great, we would not saying that when Romney Care was doing it. So let's give uh, credit to what credit is due. Not the way we need to do it. One of the things 
things we need to do is better education, better transportation, and better tolerance. Look at all the big businesses that are looking somewhere. Right now it's Amazon. Before that it was Toyota. Before that there were others. And what did they ask for? We want to go around good schools. The second thing they said, we want good transportation. Public transportation, regular transportation. And the third thing they said, we want our folks to be accepted. Tolerant and diversity. When I was a sheriff in Dallas County, I found out that the 2010 census indicated that there was over 230 languages spoken in North Texas. English and Spanish were about two of them. What is that telling us? That there's a lot of diversity among us. And we need to start accepting diversity. And one of the things that large businesses ask for is tolerance. And let us look at the talent that is available by letting us take the diversity and, and tolerance that is accepted there. We need to go ahead and bring big business, but not at the expense of the back of the worker. We don't need to attract them with low wages. We need to attract them with livable wages. One of the 46 counties in South Texas, I think I've probably been to every single one of them. Probably Jeffrey, too. What we need to do to create jobs in South Texas, we need to start moving away from an oil-based, fossil fuel-based economy to a new energy economy. Seven times more people employed in the renewable energy economy than they are in the oil and gas economy. The last time you've been down to Brownsville, they got windmills everywhere. But where are they manufactured? You go down to Corpus, you see them sitting on the dock. They're, they're built overseas, and they're sitting on the dock. Why can't we open a manufacturing plant down in South Texas? Make a start now. <laughs> All of the down the border, we can create jobs by moving away from fossil fuel to a renewable energy economy. That's how we can create jobs in South Texas. <laughs> You still you still pay the same price for bread ten years ago today? I don't think you are. Right? So the first thing we have to do is we obviously have to raise the minimum wage. The minimum wage affects hundred or two hundred thousand jobs in Texas. That's not gonna that's not gonna move the needle in Texas. It's important. It's not gonna move the needle. Right? The first thing as governor that I'll do. I'll veto any bathroom bill that comes across my desk. You know why? Because bathroom bills are job killers. They're job killers. Right? There's no Fortune 500 company that's going to move to Texas with a discriminatory bathroom bill. So we have to protect that. And if we don't elect one of these people here, our governor will sign that bill and we'll lose those jobs. The second thing is Texas is the energy capital of the world. If you want to move the needle on jobs, it's going to have to involve energy one way or the other. Alternative energy or traditional energy, either way, we need to expand our alternative fuels and our investment in those technologies. Texas needs to lead in the technology of energy, and that takes the governor to lead in that. The second thing, or the third thing, is uh, infrastructure. We need to invest in infrastructure. Our governor today just, uh, just turned, turned down every highway plan that had ever been put together because we need no longer believe in toll roads. You know, and, and, and now the people who get to wait in traffic even longer. Listen, I don't like paying tolls either, but I really don't like getting to work and back, you know, like on time. And that, what I want to do is I want to build those roads, and if it takes a toll, let's do the toll. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Listen to me. When the bonds are paid off, the toll goes away. Yeah. That's the deal. That's what we're on the and that's what we're going to Thank you very much. I appreciate it. First of all, it's a great question. I've been both a couple of days, but one put out here. Okay, South, mm -hmm. South Texas. And the question was asked, what type of business would we 
bring. Everyone up here said, well, first of all, we've got to increase the minimum wage. Well, if you don't have a job there, you can't increase the minimum wage without a job. <coughs> so we've got to create the jobs. And out of that area, it's kind of rural. So I was looking at uh, some research on reverse <coughs> okay? In that area, sometimes we have a lot of problems in that area. So what we, what we would do in this area is build these industrial uh, reverse osmosis <coughs> plants, which creates jobs. We would get the water from our oceans that's on our coast, and we purify it. That way, Texas would not have the experience of drought anymore, because now we're creating fresh water. We're putting people to work in these industries, pipes, they're laying pipes, they're digging holes. We're putting them to work in industrial type positions, which pay very good wages. That's how you create the good jobs to pay them the good wages, because we've got to have a job to put them in the fifty dollars <coughs> Also, we talked about toll roads. I don't like toll roads, but I use them a lot because where my school is that I teach at. But I got a plan. If we're going to have these toll roads, right now, China, most of these people in China owns our toll roads. So why can't Texas invest in those toll roads and get interest and dividends back just like those corporations get? If you invest in it, you get a dividend check just like those guys do. But the good thing is, Texas own it, not China. Then, when the bonds are paid off, you did made some money, and the road becomes free. That's how you create those jobs. That gets you to the $15 an hour. You're putting people to work. You're building infrastructure that we all want to use, and you need to make some money off of it. Thank you. Thank you. South Texas was the one. One, where I spoke about the casinos. Two. We need to invest in infrastructure. If we don't invest in infrastructure, businesses are going to move here. We need the public transportation. I agree with everything everyone up here said, except one thing. But I do believe renewable energy. Tom, um, you got that right. We have to invest in renewable energy, and we have to remain number one and show the rest of the U.S. how it's done. And so we need to back to The one thing I don't agree on is toll roads. I am not a proponent of toll roads. If we're using public there is a way we can fund it. We just have to do it. But no, toll roads, I personally I call them roads for the rich. Because you gotta have a lot of money to get on. And what you're doing is is you're creating a set of roads for a certain group of people that can afford them and forcing everyone else to be on the congested side, where they're wasting gas and oil, they're putting their, uh, emissions from their car, everything. I'm not a proponent of toll roads. Build the roads and let everybody ride on them to get to work. Okay, before we go to question number four, we're going to get to uh, the equivalent of the, some speed day. All right, and I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you agree. Okay, if you don't, don't. Raise your hand if you do. Raise your hand if you are pro labor unions. All right. That's true. You all can participate on this question too. <laughs> now, next speed dating question Are you pro choice? Are you pro LGBTQIA rights? Yeah. All right. Good to all six of you. <laughs> all right. Moving forward. Question number four. We're not talk about veterans. Yeah. Lupe, you will go first. Okay. What will you do for veterans? Texas has been pretty, pretty decent to veterans. I have a nice piece of property obtained by the Texas Veterans Landlord. There's a couple of issues that are coming up that are not so good for veterans. So those are the ones we need to discuss and those are the ones we need to look at. Honestly, when you ask a person to go spend their life and maybe die, you should be able to have something when they come back. Some of our uh, enlisted folks have the equivalent of minimum wage for their salary. And when I was
was in, and even now, about uh, 10 years ago, when I was talking to some of the veterans, because you stay on National Guard forever, I think they have an extension of 10 years for, to stay on there after you get out. Um, some of those enlisted folks were on food stamps. And then they come out and have no jobs. We need to start paying attention, as we have done for other things. When our folks go out and do something for us, when they come back, we need to have something for them. So, and we need to look at the VA and cooperate and work with the federal government so we can better that. Yes, they do have a program, but we need to better that and even cooperate and help them to do it better in Texas. That's all. Thank you. There's several things I think Texas can do to help veterans. And uh, Sheriff Valdez mentioned one of them. And the VA. The VA doesn't offer for veterans like myself eye care and dental care. One of the ways Texas can help is they can provide that eye care and dental care for military veterans. I think that's a good way. We can supplement what we're already getting from the VA with the state. When I bought my first house out of Maynard, Texas, I went to the Texas Veterans Land Board to borrow the money. At that time, the Texas Veterans Land Board was lending the money directly. I got caught in when they were transferred to a private enterprise. I think the state Veterans Land Board needs to go back to lending the money directly. I think there's any number of ways that we can help our veterans to supplement what they're already getting from the VA or from TRICARE. Veterans obviously serve us, so we can serve us. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that, but there's a way right now that I think is especially important. Uh, I hired a Iraq War veteran uh, by the war to run a business that I was working in. And that young man, in the course of the four, maybe five years that he worked with me, that young man lost three of his friends to suicide. And he would, he would come into my office and say, my friend just, you know, did something. And then he'd come back a couple of months later and say the same thing. And it was just happening in real time. We didn't really know at that time what epidemic that we really were facing, right? But today we do, right? And we need to do something about it. The PTSD is a real problem. And you know what? It takes real money to fix that real problem. And that's the sort of leadership that I'll provide you on the Thank you. As a Denver Storm event, I'll tell you something personal about myself. Okay, I went to the VA and I'm three years cancer free. I went for several times. <laughs> several times they kept telling me, okay, you're okay. I kept having the same symptoms. Now, if I was allowed to go out on the economy and get another doctor, and they just started where now if you hadn't gotten an appointment. 30 days, they allow you to go out. But then, if you look at it, you still got to put the paperwork in, and that still takes another 30 or 45 days. So you should. And so we have my 17 year old daughter said, Dad, you're a teacher. And I went. They gave me the same test.
have the knowledge that we know we have to go to 254 counties. You can't fly over them. You've got to drive through them. And you have to stop. And you stop in the town squares all over Texas. And yes, some people ask you, are you serious? You're a good one, right? You go to Jacksonville. Yeah, I walked in the guy goes, are you sure you know where you are? I was like, there's a Democrat right there.